usually in full what's called PPE or personal protective equipment. So I'm wearing a mask, I'm wearing eye shields, I'm you know, sometimes wearing a gown, I'm wearing you know, cover over my head um, to keep myself safe and secure. So when we make a decision to intubate a patient that has coronavirus, the first thing that we have to do is make sure that we keep our staff safe. We're using video, what we call video laryngoscopy, to, um, which is where you're looking in the airway and you can see on a screen what the airway looks like um, to assist without having to you know, move in right over the patient's mouth. We've realized now with experience and time that actually the longer that you can avoid intubation with some of these other things like BiPAP or high flow nasal oxygen or proning, which is just repositioning a patient um, where they're you know, laying, lying on their stomach, um, a lot of those things can buy you some time and the less time that you spend on a ventilator, ultimately what we see is that patients tend to do better. On a day-to-day -day basis when I am assisting nurses out in the quick look tent, I am running up and down uh, on the car line asking patients why they are here. Um, sometimes patients are here just to be COVID tested due to the pandemic. There is a patient out in the back of the car line who is having an emergency such as a heart attack or a stroke. I expedite the process, I get them a wheelchair and I bring them up to the very front of the line so that they can be seen by a provider immediately. So everybody here in the hospital has a very important role to play from the doctors to the nurses to housekeeping to dietitian to x-ray tech. As an ER nurse, this is something that we are trained for. We are constantly doing education, preparing for pandemics, disasters, any challenges that can be tossed our way. So I've had you know patients come in with very low oxygen saturations, older folks, you know, 60 plus, multiple other medical issues, heart issues, diabetes, hypertension, and they've come in critically ill, and I've followed them and seen that they were discharged home ultimately and that's been really rewarding. We treat our patients like they are our own family 